Welcome to these revived training modules. If the module has supplemental diagrams or information, these materials are included at the end of the video, where you can halt and screen print if your wish. Please note that these training materials were recovered from audio tapes and slides stored for more than 30 years. The quality has suffered on some modules, and we apologize. Jaguar Clubs of North America and Coventry Foundation thank you for your support. Jaguar Cars Incorporated presents the Jaguar Climate Control System. Occupants of Jaguar cars are situated in an interior environment of uncompromising richness and quality. The tradition of providing an elegant interior environment is a very important part of the Jaguar appeal. Automatic climate control further enhances this appeal by providing year-round automatic temperature and humidity control. Both the XJ6 and the XJS use the same system with the exception of rear passenger accommodation in the XJ6. The central component of the system is the climate control unit. This unit contains the automatic controls, the air conditioning evaporator, the heater matrix, and a number of temperature control flaps which direct airflow through the unit. Left and right blower units provide controlled forced airflow to the car's interior and have vacuum actuated flaps to allow fresh or recirculating inflow. Vacuum actuated servos in the ductwork position flaps to direct air to the various interior vent outlets. Manual control of certain vents is also provided. The automotive air conditioning system, forming the basis for climate control, cools and dehumidifies the interior air as it passes over the integral evaporator. This system must be in good condition and be fully charged before maximum performance from the climate control system can be achieved. When heat is required, it is provided from the engine cooling system through the integral heater matrix. Adequate water flow through the matrix is essential to good climate control performance. Basic operation of the climate control system is accomplished with the temperature control switch and the mode switch. With the system operating, in-car temperature is compared to the temperature selected on the temperature control switch. The system moves temperature control flaps, air distribution flaps, operates the water valve, and adjusts the blower speed as necessary to automatically match the in-car temperature to the selected temperature. Air distribution vents to the various areas of the car's interior are modulated open or closed, dependent on the temperature and mode selected. The two vacuum actuated windshield vents are full open in the defrost mode. In all other modes, they allow only a slight air bleed for continuous defogging. The vacuum actuated center vent opens for cool or blend air and closes for warm air distribution. Manually operated side vents may be opened to provide upper level air flow in any mode or temperature range. The footwell vents are continuously open when the system is on. Air flow is varied by temperature control flap positioning dependent on mode and temperature requirements. In the XJ6, rear footwell vents and a center vent are provided. These are manually controlled by the rear passengers. The temperature differential thumb wheel is used to manually change the temperature of the upper level air in relation to the footwell air. This control does not affect automatic operation. 
the mode switch has five positions, off, low, auto, high, and defrost. In off, the climate control and air conditioning systems are switched off and the blower inlet flaps are closed to fresh air. In positions low, auto, and high, the blower flaps are positioned to allow fresh or recirculated air inflow, depending on the temperature setting. Temperature and air distribution control is automatic. The blowers run at a constant low speed on low. And the blowers run at a constant high speed on high. On auto, blower speed is varied depending on the temperature. In the defrost position, the blowers run at high speed and the temperature controls are overridden to full heat. The blower flaps are open to fresh air and all air is directed to the windshield. Any temperature in a range from 65 degrees Fahrenheit to 85 degrees Fahrenheit can be selected on the temperature control switch. In modes low, auto, and high, the system will automatically regulate the temperature to the set value as well as matching the air distribution to the temperature. Temperature regulation and air distribution is controlled by the servo unit. The servo unit camshaft is positioned by a signal from the amplifier. The amplifier, in turn, compares input from the temperature control switch with input from the in-car temperature sensor to generate a signal to the servo. Shown here is a basic control diagram of the system operation in auto. Note that in auto, the blower speed is regulated by the servo. In low or high, the operation is identical, except that the mode switch directly controls the blower speed. In defrost, Temperature feedback is canceled and no servo modulation occurs. High blower speed is provided directly from the mode switch. Now that we understand the basic operation of the climate control system, let's look at each component in detail. Automatic control is achieved by the amplifier located at the base of the central unit. This is an electronic module which provides a signal to the servo unit demanding an increase or decrease in car interior temperature. Limited adjustment of the amplifier is possible to correct for minor temperature variation. The signal is generated by comparing inputs from three sources. The temperature control potentiometer inputs the desired temperature. The in-car temperature sensor, located under the crash roll, inputs the actual temperature of the car's interior, creating a differential signal. The ambient temperature sensor, located in the right blower housing, modifies the effect of the in-car sensor so that on hot days the interior temperature will be slightly cooler and on cool days slightly warmer. All main functions of the system are controlled by the servo unit located in the central unit. A camshaft driven by an electric motor and gearbox operates micro switches, vacuum switches, and moves flap actuating rods. These in turn automatically control fresh or recirculated air selection, temperature control flap positions to give a desired temperature, and interior air distribution. Blower speeds are also controlled by the camshaft position in auto mode. 
Signals from the amplifier run the servo motor clockwise or counterclockwise, positioning the camshaft to determine the heating or cooling effect of the system. A potentiometer, located at the end of the camshaft, provides control system dampening by feeding back the camshaft position to the amplifier. This prevents excessive fluctuations in discharge air temperature. The two mechanical vacuum valves in the servo control the water valve and the center vent flap actuator. An additional mechanical vacuum valve, operated by the mode switch, positions the lower heater flap in the central unit and the windshield vent flaps. A solenoid vacuum valve is used to control the fresh recirculating air flaps in the blower housings. Blower speed is automatically controlled by servo micro switches at various camshaft positions or manually selected by the mode switch. A group of relays in one housing are used to switch the blower motor's electrical loads. Current flows through the blower speed resistance unit, providing four available blower speeds. The vacuum actuated water valve, located in the engine compartment, controls engine coolant flow through the heater matrix. To prevent evaporator icing, a thermostat is used to switch off the air conditioning compressor clutch when the evaporator temperature falls below 34 degrees Fahrenheit. This is sometimes referred to as a Ranko thermostat. A water temperature thermostat is used to prevent system operation until the engine temperature warms. This is overridden when the system calls for cool air or when defrost is selected. Two inline fuses are used within the climate control electrical circuit. A one amp fuse is situated in the amplifier ground circuit. And a 10 amp fuse is used in the circuit between the anti-icing thermostat and the compressor clutch. With a basic understanding of the system and detailed knowledge of each component's function, Let's take a look at how the system achieves the desired results through its entire operating range. Shown here, in a simplified drawing, are the elements which provide airflow, temperature, and air distribution. With the system off, the solenoid valve is activated, applying vacuum to the blower housing actuators which move the flaps to recirculating air. The water valve is open with no vacuum applied, allowing flow through the heater matrix. The temperature control flaps are positioned as they were when the system was switched off and the blowers are off. When full cool is called for by the amplifier, the servo moves to the maximum cooling position. The blower housing flaps are positioned to recirculating air, the water valve is closed, the center vent is opened, and the windshield vents are closed, all by vacuum application. The temperature control flaps direct all air flow through the evaporator. The lower heater flap vacuum actuator is overridden and moved to closed. Most air flows from the upper level center vent with lesser amounts supplied to the footwell and rear vents. A small bleed is supplied to the windshield. High blower speed produces maximum air flow through the system. A note that both the water temperature and the evaporator anti-icing thermostats are overridden at full cool. When full heat is called for by the amplifier, the servo moves to the maximum heating position. The solenoid valve is switched off, preventing vacuum application to the blower housing actuators. This positions the flaps to outside air. 
The water valve is open, allowing flow to the heater matrix, and the center vent is closed, both with no vacuum applied. The windshield vents are closed by vacuum application. The temperature control flaps are positioned so that air passes through the evaporator, then through the heater matrix. The blowers run at high speed with most air flowing from the footwell and rear vents. A small bleed is provided to the windshield. Note that the water temperature thermostat will prevent system operation in the heating mode until the engine temperature has reached 104 degrees Fahrenheit. At intermediate temperatures, the system modulates between cool and heat to provide the desired temperature level. Air inflow, temperature control flap positions, and air distribution all will be varied depending on the position of the servo camshaft. In auto, blower speed will be varied depending on the difference between in-car temperature and the selected temperature. The blower speed steps down as the temperature difference becomes less. When defrost is selected, the automatic functions of the amplifier are overridden and the servo positions to maximum heating. Vacuum application is switched off to all elements. This positions the blower housing flaps to outside air, opens the water valve, closes the center vent, opens the windshield vents, and closes the lower heater flap. The temperature control flaps are positioned so that all air flows through the evaporator, then the heater matrix. Most air flows from the windshield vents and the blowers operate at high speed for maximum defrosting. Remember that in all these phases, air flow is available from the manually operated side vents. Now, we'll take a look at system diagnosis and adjustment. System faults are diagnosed with the aid of a test unit. Details for its use are included with the unit and are illustrated in the previous Performance Master's program, Climate Control Troubleshooting. Remember that the air conditioning system forms the basis for climate control. Therefore, the air conditioning system must be up to specification to achieve maximum performance from the climate control system. Limited adjustment to the temperature control flap and temperature differential linkages is possible. Detailed instructions for adjustment are covered in Technical Service Bulletin J8524. These adjustments will correctly position the relationship between the temperature control flap, bell cranks, levers, and servo actuating rods. Service tool number 12198 is used to set the nominal differential temperature adjustment. If, after testing, the temperature differential between the center vent and the footwell vents is greater than plus or minus 15 degrees Fahrenheit, further adjustment should be made as detailed in the service bulletin. Owners receive maximum pleasure from their Jaguars when all systems are performing well, affording them a rich and comfortable interior environment. Your knowledge of the climate control system will help to ensure owner satisfaction by maintaining the comfortable Jaguar environment and will increase your capacity to accurately diagnose system faults. This completes the Jaguar Climate Control System, another Performance Master's Service Training Program. Revived by the Jaguar Clubs of North America, JCNA and the Coventry Foundation. Please note all special tools shown here, apart from the Sun Workstation, are available under the JCNA Coventry Foundation Member Tool Loan Program. Please see www.jcna.com and coventryfoundation.org. Thank you.